Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. This is Xin Dianzhen from UW Medicine. This work is finished by me and my colleague Zihang, Rujo, and Vikas. Here, I will provide an overview of our paper. Consider several models. Often, we are concerned with its accuracy profile and compare the accuracy between two models. But what if we were not interested in simply stopping at accuracy? Well, one common approach is to perform layer-by-layer -layer comparisons. This makes sense. To do so, we can simply look at their difference. OK, but what if we are comparing two different networks and the layers do not have the same dimensionality? In this case, we are interested in capturing their correlation. Of course, for higher dimensions, correlation does not work. But there's a well-known tool called CCA that can indeed be used. But the estimation of projection matrices during training is problematic. The alternative we describe here resolves many of these problems very easily. The idea is distance correlation. Let's review it briefly. Consider that we are given three samples. A simple intuition is that for those two samples close to each other in one domain, we want the distance between such samples in another domain to be small. And for those pair of samples that are farther apart, we want the corresponding samples in the second domain to also be far away. So we can measure the similarity between distance pairs instead of samples and see how far we can take this idea. In fact, this is called distance correlation. We need to compute the distance matrices between the given samples and then compute the correlation between those two distance matrices. A very interesting property of distance correlation is that it does not rely on the dimension of the variables. So let's move to the actual use cases of distance correlation. In this paper, we cover three very different applications to show the power of distance correlation. Let's first look at the diverge training setup. If we want to improve the robustness of a given network, one idea is to train several networks and then assemble them together. If we do not control the subnetworks, even though we train five networks, we may only have three unique solutions. But if we use distance correlation to impose that, those five networks to be independent, we can have a more diverse distribution of networks. So what's the benefit? We know it's hard to fool all the networks all the time with the same adversarial attack sample. That means by constructing an ensemble of those independent networks, the overall model can be more robust. Let's consider another use case, disentanglement in the latent space. For the encoder-decoder model, we can encode the input images into the latent space. And in the latent space, we can ask that one node representing the attribute of interest, like age, and another node representing the residual information should be independent. This is called disentanglement. You will see immediately that we can use distance correlation to measure the independency. Finally, we can also work on a novel and interesting use case, condition one network on another network. Sometimes, we need to control for the nuisance variables to figure out the influence of the main variables. But what if the network itself is the nuisance variable? So the question of removing the random variable becomes, what does one network learn that another one does not? With the help of partial distance correlation, we can use a similar strategy as linear regression to project the distance matrix A onto distance matrix B and only use the residual to compute the correlation. Thus, we can ask or answer questions like what does VIT learn that ResNet does not, and so on. In the main paper, we study in detail these use cases in our experiment. For the diverged training, we show that our method can train more independent networks. For this entanglement, our method shows the ability to change several attributes of interest like age and gender using semi-supervised labeling. Finally, for network conditioning, we show that by removing ResNet from VIT, we can still learn meaningful results with respect to the heat map using GradCam. Thanks for reading the paper and viewing this video.